This is To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning and welcome to To The Point. I'm Michael Butchner in for Michael Williams. This week, we continue speaking with gubernatorial candidates. Joining me right now is State Senator Annette Tadeo. Welcome and thank you for making some time to visit us. My pleasure, thank you for having me. Thank you, I think it's fair to say it was a wild week in Tallahassee. We will discuss that, but uh, let's talk first about uh, your run for governor here. Uh, you've represented parts of Miami-Dade County in the state since 2017. Uh, why are you now running for governor? Frankly, because as we saw this week and we have seen throughout, uh, we need leadership in Tallahassee. Look, we have a red tide problem throughout Florida, but we also have a red tide problem in Tallahassee where we are banning books, we are banning saying gay, we are even banning corporate diversity and inclusion training. It, it is frankly unacceptable what we're going through and we definitely need someone that can work across the aisle and be able to deliver for Floridians. And I am that person because I've won in a seat that Trump won by six points mm -hmm. and I've won twice. And actually, uh, it, is, it is exactly what we need to build a coalition of voters to beat the Republicans, is to bring back the Hispanic vote that has been hemorrhaging from Democrats and to be able to win in Florida. Talk to me about your priorities. My priorities are, first of all and foremost, is, is really education, especially early childhood education. I am the only parent in the primary. Mm -hmm. I am a mom with a kid in public school. And I will tell you, early childhood education should be fully funded mm -hmm. and we need to expand pre-K education to a full day. After all, who works three hours a day? Mm -hmm. And that's what we have right now. We invest $13 a day on pre-K education while we spend over $60 to incarcerate those same kids that we just didn't even invest in them. We have a pipeline to prison instead of to a brighter future. But I also want to expand Medicaid. I have sponsored it every year since I got to the legislature. And I, I will tell you, I know we have the votes. We just don't have the governor with the guts to do the right thing for Floridians. And many other issues, of course, affordable housing and insurance mm -hmm. are major issues in the state of Florida that we need real leadership. We'll get to that affordable housing in a little bit here, but I wanted to talk to you about your path to the governor's mansion. It looks like quite the challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the latest Mason-Dixon polling, Congressman Charlie Crist is ahead with 44%, followed by Agriculture Commissioner Nikki Freed with 27%, and then you at 3%, 26% uh, undecided. You're also behind in funding ahead of the August primary. What are you gonna do to make up ground with voters, and, and how do you separate yourself? Well, first of all, if, if we based it on polling, and some polling says 15% and other polling says uh, different numbers, but I will tell you, if we base it on polling, then we should be talking to uh, Governor Graham or Gwen Graham, or we should be talking to Governor Adam Putnam, and neither of those who were way ahead, both in money and numbers, ended up being the nominees, let alone governors. And so what I know from Florida, and certainly from Democrats, that for us to win in November, we need to bring our voters out to vote for someone, mm -hmm. not just against DeSantis. And we need to create the coalition of voters that's necessary for us to win. And I can tell you that the math doesn't work if we do not win back the Hispanic vote, and if we do not win Miami-Dade specifically, but all of South Florida, real big because, of course, there was a huge subtraction of votes for Democrats this last cycle, and we know that doesn't work mm -hmm. with the rest of the state. The math won't work. You were Chris running mate back in 2014 yeah. um, when Rick Scott won. Now you're running against him. What is that like? I'm not running against Charlie. I'm running for the nomination, mm -hmm. and I am uh, making sure that we have the strongest candidate against DeSantis. Look, this is not about Charlie, this is not about me, this is not about Nikki. This is about the future of not just Florida, it's about the future of America because what we are seeing right now is the destruction of our entire system of government, the separation of powers, gone. And 
frankly, that is scary. And this man wants to be president. And so it's up to us. It's up to us Floridians and Democrats specifically to stop him and to really make sure that he never makes it to re-election so he can stop courting. Like right now, he's more worried about voters in Iowa and New Hampshire than he is about Floridians. When you announced your candidacy in October, you said, quote, I don't think most of us disagree on many of the policies, although I will tell you those people across the state that have been really outspoken to me about running are very aware that I'm a lifelong Democrat and somebody who has never stood down to our democratic values. In a state that is now Republican, outnumbered Democrats in voter registration, why is being a lifelong Democrat an important message to get across to voters? Well, first of all, again, as Democrats, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that our base is excited to come out to vote for someone. We need to make sure that we are actually I, making sure that we have someone that will stand up for our values, whether it is the expansion of Medicaid or whether it is making sure that we actually in, fully invest in education or that we understand the importance of our unions, brothers and sisters like my father, or that we understand all of the, the retirees that are here. I mean, there's so many things and people that really need us to get our act together. And if it were up to my party, I wouldn't even be elected because they told me not to run. They said we couldn't win, that we would never win, and that special elections were unwinnable. And as a matter of fact, it was the first time we had ever flipped a seat from red to blue in a special election when I won. But how do you overcome that deficit? Which deficit? Of, of Republicans <laughs> outnumbering registered Democrats. Actually, I actually have been working on that very much so, and I will tell you, I'm the one that has been working on showing mm -hmm across the state and submitting the information across the state of the voters who have been switched from lifelong Democrats to Republicans without their knowledge. And because my office started receiving so many calls, we submitted this information to the, uh, uh, I mean, both to the supervisors of elections, but definitely to the state attorneys. And now it's not just Miami-Dade. Pinellas is doing an investigation, and so is uh, up in the panhandle as well in Jacksonville. So this is happening all over the state where there's been money invested to switch Democrats without their knowledge, especially seniors and especially people who do not speak English. So I don't know that I trust the fact that they're saying that we are now all of a sudden Republican, first of all. Second of all, I represent a plus six Trump seat. I can win a lot of voters. I create the coalition of voters of both independent and even Republicans in order to win in a seat that voted for Trump by six. I want to get into what happened uh, at the Florida Capitol this week. Um, you boycotted the special session where lawmakers passed the new congressional maps, uh, the one given to them by Governor DeSantis. Uh, they also passed bills against Disney and the Reedy Creek District. In a release, you said, quote, at this point, the only thing three, free about Florida is the road to autocracy DeSantis has paved ahead for us. What do you mean by that? Because we have a process. We have separation of powers. We have a constitution, not just in the United States, but in the state of Florida. And we threw it out the window. We literally had a constitutional amendment that the voters said they wanted us to make sure that the maps were not drawn in a partisan way, that they were drawn compact with the inclusion of making sure that minorities, black and brown communities, and language communities were not divided and that they were able to have their re representation mm -hmm. as per federal law. And we just threw all of it out the window. But more importantly, I, I pledged an oath when I got sworn in to uphold the Constitution of the United States and of Florida. And the legislature literally is not upholding it by this process because they gave it to the governor. The governor got to draw his own map in the darkness, not in the sunshine, not where people could have input like we did during the session. Yes, he can veto the, the, the maps, but 
he can't just get whatever he wants, which is in essence what he just got this week. We just went there to rubber stamp him. I didn't get elected to rubber stamp him. I wanted to ask you about the governor. Despite what you say and other people say about Governor DeSantis, he remains popular here in the state. Uh, his approval rating is nearly 59 percent. That's according to the recent St. Leo University Polling Institute. What do you say to his supporters and what does this say about the state of Florida? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that we had another governor that was in the 70th percentile in approval and um, he actually lost his primary and then the general for U.S. Senate and that was Charlie Kress. But we actually uh, have a governor that is not worried about Floridians. That's what matters. What matters to all of us is that we have a rental crisis. Did we go back to Tallahassee to deal with that? No. We have an insurance crisis. Did we go back to Tallahassee? No. We have to wait till next month to go back and deal with insurance after we put pressure for him to finally do this. We have to wait for a tax uh, reduction or a, a clearance of the tax for a gas until one month before election. This is all about power and getting elected. Look, I'm a proud Democrat, but when you get elected, you get elected to represent everyone, not just those that voted for you. And the way that I've stayed very popular in a district that voted for Trump is exactly by representing everyone and worrying about the goodness and the success of all, not just those that voted for you. Thank you, Senator. Still to come, we'll have much more with Senator Tadeo, her plan to address affordable housing here in Florida.